Congresswoman Marshburn, Mashburn said earlier, um, George Will is the number one columnist in America, which I guess makes him the number one columnist in the world because he, his column appears twice a week in almost 500 newspapers. Since 1974, George has been writing twice a week, telling us how to think about things, lots of things, politics, culture, famous people, ordinary people, baseball, the Cubs, and books. George once said that, he once wrote that if he doesn't write at least a dozen columns a year about books, he doesn't think he's doing his job. Since 1981, George has graced our Sunday mornings as a founding participant in This Week with David Brinkley, and then This Week with George Stephanopoulos, and then This Week with Anybody Can Guess. <laughs> but we don't actually care about who This Week is with because the one constant voice of sanity and reason and facts is George Will. Now I... <laughs> I've always said, and those who know me might not be surprised to learn this, that I've always said that you can tell about a person by his or her enemies. And George is the scourge of many. But let me mention just two, because it tells us about him. George is in particular on the bad list of the environmental crazies. George, long before Climate Gate and the emails and, that demonstrated that there are no facts and no science to support the complete remaking of our world economy, <laughs> George began to say there are no facts and there's no science. And of course, they, they're so tolerant on the left that they began a massive campaign to try to get newspapers around the country to drop George's column unsuccessfully, I might add, but it only gives credence to one of my favorite axioms of George Wills, which is that for liberals, believing is seeing, <laughs> which is a corollary to another of his axioms, which is that liberals are for anything as long as it's mandatory. <laughs> Now, the other set of enemies are my particular favorites, and those are the crazies on the campaign finance reform jihad. And George is very, he's written many, many, many columns. I keep saying we need to publish a book of just his campaign finance reform columns. And George just nets it all out into what he calls the five most beautiful words in the English language the first five words of the First Amendment. Congress shall make no law. <laughs> George has written 13 books. One of his books, I might say, Men at Work, The Craft of Baseball, is just getting ready to be reissued, the 20th anniversary edition next March. Uh, two weeks? Two weeks? Go buy your copy. Um, but his last book before this one, One Man's America, The Pleasures and Provo Provocation of Our Singular Nation, George wrote in the introduction that writing a column resembles what used to be the unwritten but understood rules regarding Catholic confession. Be brief, be blunt, and be gone. <laughs> and then he said, increasingly clamorous media covering an always turbulent world are constantly tugging at American sleeves saying, pay attention to this. So on behalf of conservatives and actually all who love America, I want to say thank you to George Will for telling us how to think about things and telling us and saying things we know, but we don't know the words to say. And so on behalf of our, and to you, our CPAC audience tonight, I present to you George Will, and I say to you, pay attention to this. George Will.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. For Cleta Mitchell to introduce a mere journalist is akin to having Franklin Roosevelt introduced by Harry Howe. I mean, this is disproportionate. Some year, CPAC is going to come to its senses and have me introduce the most important conservative in Washington. <laughs> For about 30 years, a political ensemble of actors and musicians called Capital Steps has been delivering to Washington political satire that is increasingly indistinguishable from public policy. <laughs> At a recent a recent performance of theirs, before the, as the lights began to go down, a voice filled the auditorium in the Reagan building and said, please be seated and take note of the nearest exit, and in case of an emergency, remain seated and await your federal bailout. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when, when public policy has become a punchline, the nation has a problem and we have an opportunity. This is going to be a very good year, and what a difference a year does make. You saw just yesterday, you saw just yesterday the issuing of the Mount Vernon Statement, just part of the ferment of conservative ideas that is underway. A great conservative, Samuel Johnson, once said, people more often need to be reminded than instructed. And that's our case now. The American people need to be reminded of why we are conservatives, and we're getting an enormous assist in that from the Obama administration. <laughs> How to think about the challenges ahead of us. Now, it's a, it would be a bold person to do what I am charged with doing, which is trying to tell a group as opinionated as this how to think about and present the real problems that we're facing now. But I propose to be, for about 20 minutes, as bold as the little first grader named Susie, who was in a class where the teacher said, I want all of you children to draw a picture. And all the children set about doing it, and the teacher walked around the room, and she came to little Susie and said, Susie, of what are you drawing a picture? And Susie said, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the teacher said, well, Susie, no one knows what God looks like. And Susie said, they will in a few minutes. <laughs> In my few minutes, I want to tell you how I think we can make our argument. The liberal conservative argument in our country is alive and well. It turns on the two polar values of Western political thought, freedom and equality, both important, always in tension, always being adjusted. Today, conservatives tend to stress freedom. They are therefore willing to accept greater disparities of social outcome, and they are inclined to regard the multiplication of entitlements and the mentality that it breeds as inimical to the attitudes and aptitudes essential for free citizens of a free society. Liberals today tend to stress equality, not equality of opportunity, but equality of outcome. And therefore, they tend to regard the multiplication of entitlements and that entitlement mentality as enhancing the public good. Therefore, they are for spreading dependency. Dependency on government is not an unfortunate corollary of what they are advocating. It is their agenda. And it is that where we, we must take our stand.